Morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Wednesday, the 10th day of April 2024. I hope you're safe and healthy today. Hope your family safe and healthy and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, along with the first responders who every day are trying to save lives. Those also that pick up garbage for us to keep our streets and sidewalks and places clean and disease free. Those also that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women that are out here trying to help rescue, deliver and recover. The teenagers and children that are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. People that are also victims of pornography and child pornography. Prostitution, child prostitution, human trafficking and sex slavery. Double curses on the perpetrators of these things, double curses on the profiteers, and double curses on the perverts that create these heinous, heinous industries. Finally, double blessings on the homeless. There are nearly 600,000 men, women, and children that are homeless in the United States of America. And there are millions of people around the world in similar or even worse conditions where whole families live in the street. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. There was a basketball game last night in Chicago. The New York Knicks defeated the Chicago Bulls 128-117. to Almost it was a wire-to-wire -wire win for New York. Um, at the right time, as I mentioned in a previous video, the Knicks are starting to peak. Again, we've been talking about this all season. And every season, there's a group of people, a large group, that don't get it. Everybody, and it goes like this. They start off, they win a few games, they lose some games, and then by December, people are asking for Tom Thibodeau's job and whining that he should be replaced and coming up with names. Then comes January, and they start to kick in. And then everybody's on board by the time you get to March. In September, there are people on major platforms saying they might make the play-in if they're lucky or the 10th seed if they're lucky. Or they might be 8th seed or 7th seed. But, you know, there's too many teams that have improved for the Knicks to get higher. And every year the Knicks prove them wrong. And then everybody's on the bandwagon when you get to March. This past year was very similar. The only difference was we had a lot of injuries come upon us. First, Mitchell Robinson. That was a big blow. As we were rolling, Mitchell Robinson gets hurt. Then the Knicks acquire OG and Anobi, and they start to roll again, 12-2. and two, And then OG and Anobi gets hurt. And before that, Juju dislocates his shoulder. Things look bad. But the Knicks have been developing a continuity with the guys that we have, the, the mainstay guys, mainly a Deuce McBride, mainly a Mitchell Robinson, you know, the guys that we have, then acquiring Dante, the Villanova crew, Brunson, and Hart. The Knicks were persevering through all of that, knowing that at least two of the three guys were going to come back, starting with Mitch Rob. The good news about Mitch Rob came, and we were like, okay, Mitch Rob is going to be mad available before the end of the season, and he was. Then OG and Jew was going back and forth, and all of a sudden it was found that Jew was out for the rest of the season, but OG was coming back. So now what we got, with what we got, we can go, and I mentioned this, several people, again, more people, and this is what I'm trying to manifest to our Knicks family. Don't start negative, because the media does. The first thing come out the media's mouth is there's no way they can go very far without Julius Randle. And I told y'all, then this could get to the ECF without Julius Randle. Not that we don't need Julius Randle or we don't want him. Some people, again, get silly and start calling for him to be traded. That's stupid. But we can actually get to the finals because of the depth and continuity and Tom Thibodeau and Jalen Brunson that we got. And this is what it's looking like now. OG is now rounding into form. Already a defensive demon. And last night he scored 20-something points while playing all NBA level defense. Last night, Deuce didn't shoot the ball well, but he played all NBA level defense. Mitchell Robbins and Hartenstein dominated their position. Then you have Jalen Brunson. Years ago, Dr. J, Julius Irving, who is from Roosevelt, Long Island, and I was growing up watching him both in the ABA and in the NBA, but the ABA was the biggest memories because he came in NBA after he had already established his name. But what Dr. J would do every year is about this time, right now, 
uh, April and March, he would start going off. Not that he didn't go off during the season, but he would raise it to another level. It was almost like he was preparing for what he was going to do in the playoffs, which he would normally do. Jalen Brunson is doing the same thing. Yeah, of course, we've all noticed now he's getting several 40-point games. Had a 61-point game. Here we are in March. He's preparing to be playoff Brunson. OG is now rounding into OG. And Mitchell Robinson, every game is getting a little better, just incremental. But by the time we get to the playoffs, it's on. And so the Knicks are starting to become what we always get from the Knicks. But what now is on another level is they are starting to peak at the right time. Now, I will admit, I was calling Bodega 44, Bodega Bum, along with Burke's Bum when we first got him. And there's two reasons for that. Number one, neither of them was playing any defense. And then neither of them was consistently shooting, which is supposed to be their forte. Okay. But now Bodega, 44, is no longer the bum. It's fitting in with the second unit, and Tibbs has made a decision. Bodega is now part of the rotation. And I'm telling y'all, some of y'all thinking he was going to go to 10 men. No, he's not going to do that in 10 men rotation. Not even in the regular season, really. But in the playoffs, he reduces it down to eight. Okay? So now last night, Bodega actually played nine. And I know his name is Bogdanovich, but I done gave him a new name, Bodega 44. And I like that name. Bogdanovich only played nine minutes last night, but he was plus one. He only scored three points, but he was plus one. That's important. Then, so Tom really went seven last night. Mitchell Robinson played 20 minutes and McBride played 22 minutes. This is what you want. I'm telling you, this is what's going to be happening in the playoffs. And when Bodega 44 is hitting his shot, he'll play more minutes. Very simple formula. And you have him out there as a threat because he can score, as we know, you know, when surrounded. So you put, and, and last night, though, there was a sequence where you had Mitchell Robinson, Deuce, Hart, uh, and Anobi. And I think you had with them DiVincenzo. Or it was, it was, it was beautiful. That defense. When they were on the floor together, shut down, locked down Chicago. Just imagine now, we're coming into the playoffs. Okay? <laughs> They're peaking. Mitch Rob is getting better. OG is getting better. And the thing about OG, not only is he full 6'7", 240. Okay, so he could, he could roughneck with you if you want to. But he's high IQ, very high IQ. Knows when to cut, where to cut. Knows where to spot up. And of course, all world defense. Brethren, we're in good shape. The Knicks today are in the third seed. Right now, uh, the Bucks got a problem. And you know, we told y'all, we talked about this earlier in the season, right? Because Dame Dollar can't play defense. And they're dependent on Giannis. Everybody said, what if Julius gets hurt? What if Brunson gets hurt? We need five backup at the all-star level to get back up so we'd be all right. We need five centers. Just, you know. And I told y'all, every team is one player down from being out of it. For Milwaukee, that guy is Giannis. Giannis first was questionable because of his uh, um, hamstring last week. Now it's his... What was it? His shin, his calf is hurt. He's been carrying a heavy load for a long time. And it's, it's manifest now. So now, uh, Milwaukee's got Orlando twice and Philly. And they got to win against Orlando today in order to maintain their position as number two in the East. Because if they lose today, they're tied with the Knicks for two in the East. They hold the tiebreaker. But it'll be only a matter of two more games. So they got to win tonight against Orlando. Orlando is looking to win because they're only, right now, a game behind us. Okay? They messed up too. They lost some big games recently that they were expected to win. They lost to Charlotte last week, as I said. This is the league. So now it's coming down to the last game of the season. And one of the best news about this is right now, because of the way the Knicks are playing, they have an opportunity 
to get that 50 spot we were talking about in the beginning of the year. It looked bleak for a minute, but right now there's hope for 50 wins. So the Knicks right now are in third spot. They got a favorable schedule. They're playing Boston, but Boston shouldn't be playing their starters, at least not for like more than 20, 25 minutes. The Knicks should be in good shape against them. I'm not going to call a win because that's not, I don't want to do that, but they should be in good shape against Boston. And then, you know, they can, they got a back-to-back -back where they play Brooklyn, okay, on Friday. The back-to-back -back part is the tough part. We may be dependent on our Dukes McBride, our Mitchell Robinsons, you know, our bodegas to come through on that second unit there. And then we finish the season at the Garden against Chicago. And I think if the Knicks win these next two, the reason they'll be coming like gangbusters against Chicago is because they want that 50. So do we. The games tonight are important. Orlando is playing. Philly is playing. Milwaukee is playing. It's going to be interesting to watch these games tonight, see what happens. But the Knicks are in the best spot. Aside from Boston, who has already clinched the East, the Knicks are in the best spot right now in the Eastern Conference. They got the strongest run going. They're one, of the, they're one of the hottest teams coming right here, and they're peaking at the right time. Watch out. Nobody wants to mess with us now. And I'm telling you, here we are here. Y'all enjoy your Wednesday. So.